All right, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio. This is a show about amateur or ham radio with an emphasis on digital or data modes. Uh, today's going to be a little bit different. Today we're going to talk about power supplies. Uh, you can't just take your amateur radio and plug it into the wall. You actually need to get a power supply to provide a constant DC uh, voltage and a quite a bit of current to operate your rig. They're not all created equal. Let's take a look at some different power supplies and why you might choose one or the other. Let's talk about that this time on KM6 LYW Radio. <laughs> yeah. All right. Welcome back. Um, yeah, that's the bumper music. I, I don't know. I guess it's a gag for this show. No, I, it was just something I did one time for, for the heck of it, and you guys comment more about that. So yeah, we'll, we'll do our custom bumper music. All right, so let's talk about power supplies today. I'm going to make myself a whole lot smaller. You don't need to see my face here. Um, you know, I just did a power supply search on YouTube, uh, not YouTube, on uh, this search engine that I'm using, um, power supply radio, and you, you're just going to see a ton of them. So I just want to go over a couple of different types of power supplies. Um, they're not all similar. The, you know, the circuitry in them can be considerably different. Uh, when you're looking for a power supply, I actually got FT8 going on down here, sorry. I was gonna do, so I had this free space in, in, on the screen here, so I thought I'd run FT8 and maybe see how much current FT8 is drawing. So when you're talking about power supplies, um, you get, uh, there's four attributes. So that's price, power, obviously, the amount of current, um, efficiency, and uh, noise. Uh, let's see if I got those all right. Yeah, price, power, efficiency, and noise. And they're all, you, you really can't have all four. You can choose about three of them. Um, so th th there's uh, just a couple of, there's actually three different types of power supplies that I can think of right now. So the first of which is like a linear power supply. This is used as a massive transformer and capacitors and pass transistors um, to provide a, a steady current at a steady voltage. Um, so the downsides of these is they're really expensive. Um, they are um, really heavy. It actually emits noise, actually. If you, they hum. I, and that's, that's one of the reasons I don't use a linear power supply. Um, but the, they're not very efficient. They get really hot. And, uh, but the cool thing is, is they're like dead silent from an RF perspective. You know, it is a steady voltage. Um, so that's really what a linear power supply is. The other kind of power supply is a switching power supply. This is where we use circuits to try and level off uh, the AC current and try and provide a, a steady DC current. Um, these are considerably cheaper. Uh, they make no acoustic noise. You can have one on your desk and you won't know it's functioning. You won't hear it. Um, they don't get hot. They're really efficient. Um, and the price is actually better on a lot of the switching power supplies. So I know people who, you know, if you really want to have a zero noise kind of power supply, I think linear is the way to go. But if you want to be cost effective, efficient, um, I think a switching power supply might be the way to go. Um, you know, the third type of power supply, I think I said there was three, is don't overlook a battery, okay? Just a plain old battery. This is actually inexpensive. It's dead silent. Um, it provides considerable amount of power. I guess the only downside to a battery is that it runs flat after a while. But, you know, if you know how long you're going to be operating, consider a battery, not just a, uh, a power supply. So we did linear, we did switching, and we just got a plain old battery. Now, pretty much all radio power supplies are going to have a voltage requirement, and it's almost always 13.8 volts. You know, you think, well, that's, that's kind of an arbitrary number. Well, it's not really. If you look at automotive electrical systems, uh, at least here in the United States, I don't know how, if it's like a global standard, but, you, you know, the output of an alternator is usually about 13.8 volts. Uh, you'll see a lead acid battery chemistry uh, come up to 14.2, maybe 14.6 volts. And that's exactly what these power supplies try and emulate. Uh, some of them have little trim pots on them where you can totally dial in 13.8 volts. Or maybe you want to kick it up to 14.2 volts. Look at the manufacturer of your radio to see what the voltage input requirements are or are not. Um, a lot of them will say 13.8 volts plus or minus 15%. Um, so that means you can usually kick it up to 14.6 or actually be more like 15 volts. But look at your manufacturer uh, before you settle on a voltage. But ideally, 13.8 volts is where you want to be. Now, every radio is going to have a different wattage rating. Um, watts is just volts times amps. Um, so you're always the volts is always going to be 13.8 volts. And uh, a typical 50-watt radio, like a dual-bander, you know, the... Uh, 
a Yesu or an ICOM, something you put in your truck, 50 watt radios. I just measured it and it's about eight amps, eight amps, okay? Um, a different, like an HF rig over here, like this one here, the ICOM 7300, uh, and it's a 100 watt output radio. Um, I've seen it come up to like 20, 25 amps um, at most. HF rigs are a little different is in that they don't, when you're talking on them, they only need the current. Like when you're talking, it actually is consuming current. Um, when you're not talking, they're basically idle. They don't consume any current. So the, the current on an HF radio in single sideband mode, it varies a lot. It pops around. So you're kind of looking for an average current there. If you're doing digital modes, like over here on uh, FT8, let me talk to call this guy here while we're doing this. I'll leave with the transmitter. So I see if I can make contacts while we're making videos. <laughs> So on, on an FM rig, the dual banders, they draw constant current. So the the 50 amp, the, uh, the Yesu behind me over here, um, the VHF rig, again, 8 amps. And then I see this go up to 25 amps. Another rule of thumb is look at the fuse on your radio. So all of your radios are going to have fuses on them. So you know, I'm going to look at this one. Um, this is a 25 amp fuse. This is a cable that would go to an HF rig. Uh, when you're sizing your power supply, I like to go up for about 150% of the fuse rating for your rig. And I know it's hard to know the fuse rating on your rig before you actually have it. And I know you're buying all this stuff at the same time. Um, so for an HF rig with a 25 amp fuse, I like to go with a 35 amp power supply, you know, 125 to 150% over provision. The reason you want to over, over provision your power, you know, if, let, Craig, it only draws 20 amps. But why do I need a 35 amp uh, or 30 amp radio or a power supply? Well, because if you're really drawing down on that power supply, running it at its maximum uh, load, uh, you're going to see the voltage drop. Right? It's going to go, it's not going to hold 13.8 volts if you're really pulling it at its maximum current capacity. Um, some radios can't handle a voltage drop. Uh, you know, a lot of them, like I said, will say 13.8 volts plus or minus 15%. But some radios, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of the Yaesu 991, for example. If you operate that at 12 volts, um, you know, let's say your battery is getting flat or you're really pulling down that voltage on your power supply by overtaxing it. Um, go look at the power output on that Yesu. It's only going to be like 50, 60 percent, 50, 60 watts um, when you got it set for 100. So some radios really insist on 13.8 volts really to get the maximum output out of your radio. So talking about these power supplies, um, I just wanted to go over them kind of in order here. This is the linear power supply. It's hard to get the scale, but it's 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 big. It's, this is a big power supply. I actually had one of these. I refurbed one, bought another one. Um, I actually returned this one. I didn't like the linear power supply. I think the switching power supply just did just as well for uh, considerably less um, in price. Um, I didn't notice a noise difference. And plus, this thing was making a humming noise all the time. That was really the deal killer for me is the linear power supplies tend to hum in your shack acoustically. Um, they are dead silent, however, at least in theory, because uh, they use uh, this one, I think, uses like four pass transistors. What was this one? This is a 35 amp. So this is a 35 amp linear power supply by Astron, really good manufacturer. That's going to power your 100 watt HF rigs, okay? Uh, they make smaller ones as well. Um, if you you can get a 15 to 20 amp to, uh, power supply to, to drive your H, your uh, VHF dual bander, you know, that you got in the car or your you know, VHF UHF radio. Um, that's these, these are great folks here. Astron Power Supplies. Samlex. Now, these are the guys I tend to go with. OK, so a Samlex Power Supply. I actually have an example. This one is for my VHF UHF radio. This is a 1223 says right there and those numbers are not arbitrary this means it's a 12 volt supply and it will uh, provide 23 amps of current at 12 volts actually 13.8 volts but you know who's counting so samlex i really like this is a switching power supply this is as opposed to the linear power supply that we just looked at uh, that's samlex that's going to drive you know they make a big one and a little one i got the big one over here i have a samlex uh, 1235 so this is a 35 amp power supply and it's actually driving uh, this radio over here this hf rig that big uh, 1235 m samlex also if you see an m usually in the model name like m is in is mike um, that means it'll have meters on it you know you'll see for example this one doesn't have little cool meters I, I like the meters i think they're cool but this one doesn't have it but my hf rig my samlex radio samlex power supply over here um, does have amperage and voltage meters. Uh, most good HF radios will have the same uh, current and voltage uh, displayed on their screens as well. So Samlex, I really like. 
Um, there's another thing you can go with here, and that's these PC power supplies. So if you've got an old PC, you're thinking, well, maybe I can just use this with my ham radio. Um, you know, it says right on the back of the thing, like 30 amps, you know, for your PC. The only problem with these uh, is they're not 13.8 volts. These are almost exactly 12 volts. I've carried out several decimal places because that's what a PC would prefer. Now, remember what I said about the AC991? At, at 12 volts, you're just not getting full output. The place where I do like these is when I'm powering an HT like this, if I don't want to run my HT battery down. These HTs usually operate at 7.4 volts, you know, using a lithium battery on the back. Um, these are actually pretty good for those. If you supply 13.8 volts to your HT, you're going to notice it's getting hot. So all that extra voltage, it basically just shorts to ground and, and dissipates in heat. So what I do like to, is to pair my HT with an old PC power supply. Um, this is 12 volts. This like kind of like this is rated for 13.8 volts, but you know it really likes seven and a half volts. That's what these like. Um, so what I also do is to lower the voltage on this even more. Is you can run the uh, the output of these through a couple of big diodes. Um, that'll lower, you know, each diode, the, the voltage drop over diodes about one volt. Um, so I can actually get this 12 volt power supply down to about eight volts by running it through a couple of big diodes and running my HT, and it will run a lot cooler. It will thank you for it. So PC power supplies, while not good for your HF rig or your VHF dual bander, um, the PC power supply is gonna work good for your HT. That's what I like about those. I think I mentioned the battery. This is your, probably your best bet. You know, if you're in the field, obviously this is what you're gonna be using, but this is dead silent. Um, the voltage is gonna vary a little bit as it falls down. The other thing is, in order to know what current your radio is drawing, is get one of these cool watt meters. What is this called? Uh, a lot of them were for RC models initially. There's no way I'm gonna be able to read that. Uh, but look for watt meter, W-A-T-T -T meter, and you can get these at the usual outlets. And put plug these in line with your radio just to get a real idea of what it's actually drawing, the, the watt meter. I do like those. All right, moving on. We talked about Astron. We talked about Samlex. Um, PowerWorks is a popular one. Uh, you notice a lot of these have the... Uh, uh, power poles um, actually embedded in them now. So if you've standardized your shack on power poles, um, you know, maybe that's a feature that you want. Uh, PowerWorks has that. Actually, the uh, Astron does that. Uh, the new ones do. The Samlex does not. Um, I'm actually okay with that uh, because I use uh, what are called... I, I didn't standardize my shack on power poles, unfortunately. Uh, I standardized my shack on these uh, Dean's Ultra Power Connectors. Uh, mostly because I was into RC models and I needed to, you know, pull 50 amps through these. So everything in my shack has these on it. So, you know, when you're picking a power adapter uh, standard for your shack, uh, it's going to stick with you a long time. So be considering, you know, what, what the adapters are. Like these are just uh, screw terminals. Uh, maybe they would take a banana plug as well. Some of them do. All right, and that's the Samlex. So moving on to PowerWorks. This is what got me started on that is I noticed they had the... Uh, the uh, power pole uh, adapters in the front of the power work supply. Um, this is a switching supply, again, much like the Samlex we just looked at, and the price is about the same too. So this is a 30 amp version, um, you know, $140. Um, they've actually gone up quite a bit. Um, I know a lot of people who are really trying to do this cheap or look on eBay and they see these uh, power supplies for uh, like LED light strings. You know, if you have a bunch of LED lights, you know, outside in your house, they have these drivers, these, uh, Power supplies. They're about 12 volts. Uh, these actually have a little trim pots on them. I have been able to get these up to 13.8 volts just by with the screwdriver. Um, you can buy a crazy high output. Uh, like I can get like, a, I don't know, let's just do a 20 amp. Um, actually do 24 volts, can't you? We don't want 24 volts. Boy, make sure you get the right one there. Uh, actually, these are all 24 volts. <laughs> Anyways, I... Make sure you, if you get one of these, get the 12 volt, 12 volt version. Um, and they, it's really cheap. So for like, uh, we just saw it here, like a 20 amp version of this is $35. Now this is 10% of the cost of the equivalent linear power supply. So why would I pay, uh, you know, the extra 90% to get a real linear power supply? Um, these... I, I don't have one of these. Actually, I bought one of these and I threw it in the trash. So these are kind of hit and miss on what you get. Um, yeah, they could work. Um, put a meter on it. Uh, measure the output before you plug it in. Um, you can use it with your VHF dual band rig. Now, my problem with this is, uh, you know, when I had one of these cheap eBay power supplies, um, I noticed that if I was transmitting, uh, I, would, I would key up the transmitter and the voltage actually came went up 
on the power supply. Well, that's weird. Usually the voltage sags down when you, you know, you're transmitting on the radio, drawing on your power supply. But with these cheaper eBay supplies, um, <laughs> honestly, what, what, what I discovered is when I took my HT, and actually it was UHF was the worst, if I waved my UH, my HT over the top of this, uh, this cheap switching power supply, I could get, and transmit, I could get the voltage up to 20 volts, which is just dangerous. It's way over the maximum allowable, allowed by your, your rigs here. So be really careful about these cheap switching power supplies on eBay. They are not RF shielded. Now, other people have reported in who have bought these. I, I'm not going to risk it again. Uh, this is, hey, it's not a problem. You know, look, yeah, Brian, if you're watching, <laughs> I know you did the test and you were able to wave your HT over your, uh, your, the, your cheap switching power supply and the voltage did not come up or did not go haywire. Um, so these can be hit and miss. I had a bad experience with these, but they are extremely cheap. Um, remember when it comes to price, performance, efficiency, and uh, noise, um, these are on the cheap side, but I think you're going to find, that you'll, I haven't measured it, but you're going to find some noise and, and the voltage just was, was not stable in my experience for these cheap guys. All right, so that's the power supplies. I think we did it here. You know, I wanted to make more contacts while we were playing with this. I was trying to, you know, I was peeking at this. Um, this guy's calling Europe. That's just able to transmit her. I was just looking at, you know, on my when I'm doing FT8, um, I'm actually transmitting. I usually transmit at about 28% power, so that'd be 28 watts. And just looking at the current meter when I am transmitting, it comes up to about 9 amps. So when you're doing digital modes, you're going to be pulling a lot more power for a lot longer time. Digital modes are a lot harder on your radio and your power supply. When you're just talking a single sideband, it just needs enough power for each syllable. You know, literally, that's why you see the current go up every time you say something. But for digital modes or CW, um, you really need to turn the power down just to, to get your power, not only your radio break, uh, but your power supply break. And yeah, during that last transmission, I was about 9 amps at 28% uh, power. Um, so yeah, I'm calling that guy and see if I see if he responds. You know, I always make contacts. Oh yeah, he did respond. He says, uh, I'm coming in at negative 11. Um, so uh, this is, uh, <laughs> scrolling by, I can't see it. W0ADO, I think that's your call sign. Man, w, I'm sorry, W0AOO, if I got that right. So yeah, thanks for the contact here on, on FT8. Uh, again, pulling nine amps out of my Samlex switching power supply through this ICOM 7300. Um, let's see. Uh, he gave me a negative 11. Uh, that was at 28% power, and uh, I sent him a, a, a negative seven. So those are those are those are those are solid enough numbers here, especially for the time of day. And it doesn't even look like my antenna is hoisted up tight. We've had some wind here. All right, so. Thank you for hanging out with me talking about power supplies. Um, I wanted to thank, of course, the patrons of the channel here. Um, Patreon.com slash KM6LYW. Um, everything helps. You guys, it's just been absolutely overwhelming. So if you, be, if you are a patron, not only are you helping me justify this channel with the XYL and all of the time I spend on it, but you also get access to the DigiPie. Uh, in fact, that was the thing that just made that FT8 contact in our bottom right-hand uh, corner of our screen is the DigiPie. You notice FT8 is running in a web browser and you can do this on your phone or Wi-Fi device. You don't need to know a bunch of Linux stuff to do all of these data modes. All of the data modes we talk about on this channel are in that DigiPi SD card image. And again, this is for uh, uh, patrons of the channel for KM6OIW at patreon.com. You get that DigiPi SD card image and it's just packed with all of the stuff we talk about on this channel. Every data mode you can think of. So I'll zoom this in a little bit. So Foo, you think you've been with me, with me the longest? Foo, Steve, Mark, Ryan, uh, uh, Brian. I need to expand your name there. Uh, Jake, Christopher, Tony, Michael, Ian, Jim, Brad, Simon, Buddy, Kevin, Robert, Kevin, Harold, Malcolm, Glenn, Strecker. Hey, love the channel, Glenn. Always looking forward to contact. Contact uh, content from you guys, Eddie, Matthew, Robert, uh, Aaron, uh, James, Don, Alfred, Fallen Yoda. If you got a weird name, I'm probably going to read it. Uh, so Jim, John, uh, Mike, Mark, SB Fox. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate it. Ziggy Zog again, Isaac. Uh, I don't, I don't know this Kanji character set, or I'd say your name. Oh probably poorly. Uh, Wayne, uh, JD, Carlos, Jamie, Calix, Calix Gonzalez. Thank you, Calix. Uh, Peter, 
Van We Why Van We Productions. Thank you guys. Uh, Ryan, Jeremy, thank you, thank you, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Again, this is patreon.com slash KM6LYW. It really helps out with the channel and it gets you access to that uh, Digipy SD card image. Uh, so you can start playing with all the data modes we talk about here on KM6LYW Radio. Hey, my name is Craig. I'm in California and I 